one of the most intriguing engineering feats humankind have achieved is the ability to go into outer space. Watching a rocket launch event, even the televised versions, are always interesting. The hot plumes of air ejected out of a launch rocket's nozzle is a type of external flow. In most external flow examples, a solid object is immersed and is moving through a fluid. Under certain scenarios, such as airflow over stationary high-rise buildings, we have fluid which is flowing around a solid. There is, however, another class of external flows which is not constrained by the solid walls. Such flows are called free shear flows or shear layer flows. There are typically three types of free shear flows, sheds, wakes, and mixing layers. In this lesson, we will focus our attention on jets. In engineering, we want to know the spreading rate of a jet. This requires knowing the width of the jet and its velocity scales as a function of distance from the jet outlet. It is extremely critical in engineering applications for designing rocket nozzles for providing the necessary thrust to take a trip into outer space. Some of these jets are planar, like the case of an aerospike engine, while others are round. Even though planar jets have limited engineering applicability, these develop the necessary fundamentals to analyze round jets. Applications involving jet engine noise where acoustic measurements are required, use this jet width to identify optimal locations to place microphones to capture these acoustic waves. In the case of an automobile exhaust, these calculations are necessary to meet emission standards. Jets are flows exiting a confined source into the ambient environment. This planar jet is exiting from an opening whose dimension is 2B0. As there are no walls, the jet continues to expand at constant pressure. Similar to the boundary layer on the flat plate, the jet forms a 2D shear layer. Just downstream of the opening, there is a potential core where the fluid can be treated as inviscid. In this region, the fluid velocity is relatively constant and equals the exit velocity of the jet. Outside this inviscid zone, we have a developing region where the fluid velocity decreases from the exit velocity V0 to the ambient air velocity at the outer boundary of the jet. This velocity decrease is because of fluid viscosity. After a certain length, the velocity of the jet becomes smooth and its shape does not change anymore. Here, the velocity is said to have achieved a self-similar profile and the jet region is often referred to as a fully developed self-similar jet. In this region, the dominant velocities along the x-direction are characterized by large Reynolds numbers. For all practical purposes, the boundary layer approximations to obtain the flat plate solution can be used to simplify the governing equations in the self-similar region. Following these approximations, a simplified set of equations are obtained in both 2D and axisymmetric forms. As the jet spreads at a constant pressure, the momentum flux at every cross-section in this region is always a constant. This can be evaluated from the constant inlet velocity profile to obtain the following relationship. The obtained value of the momentum flux is applicable in both laminar and turbulent flow regimes. Depending on the exit velocity, Jets can show laminar or turbulent characteristics. In this lesson, 
we are going to learn about both these flow regimes. I am going to be the laminar guy and analyze the laminar jet solution. And I am the turbulent guy and will talk to you about turbulent jets. Similar to the Blasius approach in laminar boundary layers, we use the similarity solution to solve for the velocity profile of the laminar plane jet. Hermann Schlichting proposed the following similarity variables for the stream function. The corresponding velocity components are given by u and v. These variables help us reduce the second order partial differential equation in two variables to a third order ordinary differential equation in just one variable. We obtain an analytical solution using the following boundary conditions. The constant A is evaluated from the integral of momentum flux M. To understand the behavior of turbulent jets, we use mean jet velocities instead of actual. The boundary layer continuity and momentum equations are slightly modified. We have a shear term in the momentum equation which is related to the turbulent eddy viscosity of the fluid. For turbulent jets, the center line velocity and jet width are functions of jet momentum, density and distance. As there are no walls, these variables are not influenced by the molecular viscosity of the fluid. Dimensional analysis of the momentum equation gives us the following results for plane and axisymmetric jets. Unlike laminar jets, these constants are unique and are independent of the flow Reynolds number and are obtained experimentally. The simplest model for eddy viscosity was proposed by Prandtl, where the viscosity varies as a function of square root of x. Gottler in 1942 proposed similarity variables to compute the jet width for turbulent jets. Similar to the laminar jet analysis, a single ordinary differential equation is solved using the same boundary conditions. On solving the laminar equations, the solution gives us the velocity distribution as well as the maximum center line velocity. When obtained, the velocity profiles are plotted at various axial lengths and we obtain a self-similar profile of the laminar jet. This jet continues to spread as it travels away from the issued location. The center line velocity of the laminar jet decreases at the rate of one-third power of the distance from the jet exit. The jet width is defined as twice the distance where the local jet velocity becomes 1% of its maximum velocity. The jet width increases at the rate of two-thirds power based on the location of the jet from its exit. A plane jet can quickly transition to turbulence at very small Reynolds number of 30. Since the velocity of turbulent jets drop asymptotically, the jet width is not very well defined. Therefore, we define half velocity point along the y direction where the jet velocity becomes half of its maximum value at the jet axis. Using this, the jet growth rate is estimated as tan 13 degrees and is independent of Reynolds number. In a different approach, we assume a velocity profile shaped like a Gaussian curve and come up with a different set of similarity variables. Using the jet's integral equations, we estimate the centerline velocity. In this case, C1 is obtained from experiments. For example, Albertson in 1950 computed the value of C1 to characterize the velocity distribution in turbulent jets. 
the obtained velocity profiles at various axial locations are plotted. In the case of turbulent jets, its centerline velocity decreases as it travels farther. This decay occurs as square root of x. From an engineering perspective, turbulent round jets are more widely used compared to laminar. Because of this, we are going to say goodbye to the laminar guy and talk about turbulent jets in the rest of the lesson. Round jets are more resilient to instabilities compared to plane jets and transition to turbulence at much larger Reynolds number of 2000. A different set of similarity functions are used to solve for round turbulent jets. Without going into the similarity analysis again, we will discuss the obtained results here. As jet diameter increases linearly along x, the centerline velocity decreases. The eddy viscosity for a round turbulent jet is a constant and is obtained using experimental curve fitting. Based on experiments, the following jet velocity correlation was obtained. The self-similar velocity profiles at various axial locations are plotted as a function of y. The maximum velocity decays along the axial length as jet flows downstream. Because of this, the jet continues to slow down until the jet velocity drops to an quiescent velocity of the fluid. These correlations are used to this day to obtain the first order estimates using the design phase of any engineering application. With the availability of better numerical techniques and today's computational resources, we are able to obtain a more accurate solution to jets using the modern day computational fluid dynamics. Having said that, engineering designers use these correlations obtained from both similarity approach as well as experiments to verify and validate insights obtained from CFD models. Once that is done, the CFD code is now ready to explore different complex engineering scenarios.